Hey, what is up you guys? My name is Tatiana, you're watching Tatiana's Tiny Zoo, and today we're gonna be updating some of my most famous bioactive enclosures. If you've been following my channel for a while, then you've probably already seen clips of my Lord of the Rings themed bioactive leopard gecko enclosure, and off to my other side is another leopard gecko bioactive that I built that's more like castle medieval themed. Well, these two bioactive tanks were actually some of the very first videos I posted to YouTube. So these tanks have been around for a couple years now and I still haven't done any maintenance at all on them. Now, if you're new to my channel or new to the concept of bioactive keeping, all that really means is inside of my enclosure here, there should be a living ecosystem. That means that there is real soil in there as well as invertebrates or what is known as a cleanup crew. So that could be springtails, roly polies, other insects that help break down the waste of my animals. Now on top of substrate and a cleanup crew, bioactive enclosures should also include plants. And what this creates is a really closed cycle of my pets producing waste, the cleanup crew then eating that waste because they're decomposers and detritivores. And then after that waste has been processed by them, it is then turned into nutrients that can be picked up by the plants and help them thrive as well. Bioactive tanks are a really great way for you to take a slice of nature straight from outside and into your own home. But just because these guys are self-cleaning, that doesn't mean that there is no maintenance required for bioactive enclosures. In fact, I have an entire YouTube video dedicated to explaining everything that it takes to maintain a bioactive enclosure long-term. I'll include a link for that video down in the description below. So what we're gonna be doing in today's video is actually the regular maintenance for these enclosures or what I hope to be the regular maintenance because if I'm being completely honest with you guys, um, these two enclosures here have kind of fallen to the wayside over time. They are arid enclosures, which means they're not as humid and tropical as some of my other builds. And if you guys have had to make an arid bioactive enclosure, they're actually a lot harder to maintain in my opinion and to really make sure that the ecosystem thrives um, because of how dry this substrate has to be and some Sometimes gets. And you'll actually notice on Ghost's side, her enclosure has gotten particularly bad. Um, most of her plants have died. I'm sure in both of these, a lot of the cleanup crew has died. So we're going to be adding fresh plants, fresh soil, and fresh cleanup crew to both of these enclosures. I already have some fresh substrate mixed up. It's sitting to the side over here, and I can't wait to get started. So let's quit talking and start working on these enclosures. All right, so we're gonna start with Brienne's enclosure. Uh, that is the Lord of the Rings themed build that I have. And what I'm gonna start with is just pulling everything that I can out of this build. This is her hobbit hide, her little hobbit house, which she doesn't actually sit in very much because you will be able to see where she sits in just a moment, I'm gonna pull her out. Can you come out, sweet lady? She wedges herself way back here. Here she is. This is Brienne, if you haven't met her already. She's very sweet. She's one of my program animals. So she visits a lot of kids and they get to touch her, and sometimes if they're really lucky, they get to hold her, although that's not often. She has a little spot on her nose. She's very cute. All right, Brienne, you're just gonna hang out in this enclosure I have prepared for you, and I will move her off to the side here. And now we can continue pulling stuff out. I am also gonna start collecting all of these leaves because um, they're not very broken down and I would love to keep them. So as many as I can, I'm going to pull out and reuse. And if some of them get buried, that's all right too. It's not the end of the world. So I got a huge bin of leaves out. I'm gonna keep these and sprinkle them on top once I'm all done. And the next thing I'm gonna do is just give the soil a nice stir. I wanna stir up all of these leaves and some of this dry substrate. Just give everything a really fresh starting point. I'm not gonna pull any of this old substrate out. I'm actually gonna leave it in and add the new stuff on top. I don't wanna disturb these plants too much. Oh, look what I just found. One of her little stepping stones that got buried. And I already know that this pothos is a little bit 
too much for my taste. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. And maybe I will use this strip in Ghost's Enclosure. And what we're gonna start doing now is just adding fresh substrate. And I'm gonna add at least an inch, possibly even several inches of substrate. And one reason why this is so important is because it really helps your plants get all of those excess nutrients that they might be needing. The nutrients that get broken down from your pet's waste are um, pretty good for plants, but long term you do need to supplement a little bit, otherwise I've noticed that they just start to struggle a little bit. The substrate also, um, as it dries out and gets kind of worn and old, it will compress down. So you'll start to see maybe your substrate is looking a little bit lower than when you first put the tank together, maybe by an inch and sometimes even, even several inches. So it's good to just add some fresh stuff back in every once in a while. And by every once in a while, I mean like once a year, once every other year, I think would be best for most enclosures, but you really have to play it by ear and kind of just assess the quality yourself. So I know Brienne really likes to dig in the back here. I'm gonna give her a solid space to dig around. And I'm just gonna keep adding until it's at a level that I'm happy with. Now, before I do too much more, I do wanna make sure I don't forget the cleanup crew that I'm adding. So one of the things I'm adding is springtails and the other is dwarf white isopods. I'm gonna add the springtails now and the isopods a little bit later, but I'm gonna go ahead and add these springtails as well and give them a berry because they don't like drying out. So I'm gonna make sure they're really well buried inside of this freshly damp substrate. And let's just even everything out over here. Perfect, and these are temperate springtails, so they should do pretty good in a more arid ecosystem. I'm gonna go ahead and start adding things back into this enclosure. All right, now I wanna go ahead and add the little path back, cause I really like the way that looked when it wasn't all buried. And we're gonna add her feeding tile back also. This is just kind of the last step in front of her little house. And it gives me a clean place to feed her as well. Okay, now that the substrate is more or less the way I want it, I'm gonna go ahead and start adding the leaf litter back in. And leaf litter just prevents substrate from drying out. It keeps the moisture down in the soil, which the plants and the, the isopods like a lot as well. Now I did start to really have issues with these enclosures because my reptile room has had not one, but I think two pretty severe fungus gnat infestations over the couple years that I've been living here. I have a whole video on how to manage fungus gnats and other house plants on my channel. I can link them in the description below if you guys are interested. But how that happens is basically wherever you buy your house plants from, whether it's Home Depot or Lowe's or a plant store, um, there could be some hitchhikers or some stragglers on those plants themselves, be it spider mites or thrips or fungus gnats, things like that. And one of the treatments I tried is actually drying out the substrate. And unfortunately, when you dry out substrate that contains isopods and things and springtails, uh, all of those animals die off because they need the moisture in the substrate to survive. So that's kind of what happened in these builds is a number of months ago, maybe even over a year ago, I dried out the substrate and then m the majority of my cleanup crew died off and I just never got around to replacing it. So unfortunately, it kind of got away from me. Now, something I am gonna go ahead and add is a plant that was in this enclosure when I first built it and then like I was saying, when I had to dry the substrate out, this plant just kind of dried up and died. And that is this creeping leaf fig here. And these are just a couple cuttings I'm putting in here. I have no idea if they're gonna root or not. I tried to pick out stuff with roots on it, like this one here. But I'm gonna have to keep a really close eye on it for the first couple weeks while it gets settled. Um, just to make sure that it has enough water, it's not drying out too much. But when creeping fig starts to take off, it is really something. It makes these beautiful walls of green all over your enclosures, which I just love. Let's go ahead and add the water dish back in here, make sure it's nice and flat as well. And then 
The last thing I'm gonna do is give these plants a really nice water. I'm gonna start by misting this top one here just because I'm worried that while it's not rooted in, I might displace a lot of that soil around the roots if I water it. And then I'm also gonna go ahead and give all of these plants a really good watering. Make sure the soil is really well saturated. Well, from where I am sitting, this enclosure is looking pretty well done. I watered the plants in really good. I think the leaf litter is looking good. The last thing we're gonna do is add the isopods. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some dwarf white isopods. They're small enough that Brienne shouldn't be able to see them and hunt them out. Now the last thing we have to do is add Miss Brienne. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now I know she'll wanna go to her favorite spot. So I'm just gonna plop her down where she will wanna go. I think Brienne is pretty content to just sit here in her little hobbit house. So we're going to go ahead and move on to Ghosty. Alright, so we are going to go ahead and move on to Ghosty's enclosure. And the process is going to be pretty much the same. So I'm going to start with getting as much as I can out of this enclosure. And Ghost is not going to be happy to see me, so there's a lot of poop in that corner, Miss Ghost. Are you going to come out of this hide or are you going to stay in here? I'm glad you like it so much. Alright, I got her out. Here's Miss Ghost. Not happy to see me pretty much ever. She does not have very good eyesight and she does not like bright lights. So she is pretty PO'd to be out right now. I've had these geckos for a really long time. I've had Brienne since I was in high school or early college and I got ghosty about a year after that. So like seven or eight years now I've had these girls. All right, let's put her away somewhere dark. And we can keep emptying her enclosure here. And I actually love this dead grass, so I'm going to pull it out and then bury it again once we got some fresh soil in there. And so now we're going to start pulling leaves out. And so now I can go ahead and kind of do the same thing that I was doing to Brienne's enclosure. I'm actually going to get some of the substrate a little bit wet so that we can mix some water in as well. Otherwise, it is looking pretty dry. And a couple solid scoops of substrate as I spill it all over the floor, of course. And then I'm going to go ahead and give this a stir also. And now it is time to add more substrate on top. All right, so now we are gonna go ahead and add our springtails, just like the first time. Um, I might be even adding them a little bit late. Let's just cover them up with some fresh substrate, shall we? All right, and now we are gonna go ahead and start adding things back. So I wanna start with this over here, her favorite little house. And Coasty has two little slates here to absorb her heat on and her UVB as well.
As you can see, Ghosty's enclosure only has this one last plant that survived. So I'm gonna go ahead and give her a beautiful pothos um, so that her enclosure has some more greenery. I just have to figure out how I wanna put him in here. And one of the things I love about Ghost's enclosure is this kind of dried grass. It's not alive anymore, as you can see, but it adds such a fun element to her tank. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in a couple spots that I like. And just like Brienne's tank, I'm gonna go ahead and add some of this creeping fig, see if we can get it taking off in here. This kind of adds to the whimsy of this enclosure, I think. It gives her an extra little hiding spot if she wants it. Um, and I just think it goes with the overall theme. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and add the leaf litter back in. We're gonna go ahead and make sure these plants get really nicely watered in. Fill up this water dish. All right, and now that the soil is really nice and saturated, we're gonna go ahead and add the isopods in. Same as Brienne's, we're gonna do dwarf white isopods. And now that that's done, it's time to put Ghosty back in. Ghosty's not gonna wanna explore. She's gonna wanna go back in this hide that she's used to, and that will be that. We're gonna go ahead and close the doors here and be done. Well, with that, the maintenance for both of these leopard gecko enclosures is finally complete. My camera is overheating, it is dying, it is throwing up, it wants to be done. It is way too hot in my reptile room for this nice new camera. Um, so I'm gonna wrap it up here, guys. If you enjoyed this video or if you learned something about bioactive tank maintenance, consider subscribing to my channel. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. A special shout out to my Patreon supporters. Your monthly contributions help feed uh, the monsters that I have in my reptile room. They eat a lot of food, let me tell you. So your support on Patreon means the world to me. As always, the links for all of the products that I use are gonna be in the video description, as well as some other helpful bioactive video links in case you wanted to check them out and learn more. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video. Hello, hello, keep moving in there. Let's give her an offering. What number are we at? I think that was only two or three. Here you go, here's one.